to the ball game. Take me out to. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Spring training is here. The Astros have reported. I'm not in Florida, but I'm trying to feel those Florida vibes tonight. I'm joined with my pal, Rip Griffin from the Rip Griffin Show. We are so glad you're here, sir. We got so many things to talk about tonight. Justin Verlander is back, and it's a welcome sight. You're on Alvarez walking around like a man who's got something to do and just probably back there chewing on bats and, and breaking bat handles. I mean, dude, I'm so excited. Dusty Baker tells us he did something for the first time since November. And we've got some news, some late breaking information about the Carlos Correa talk. So thank you all for tuning in. This is Locked on Astros. I'm H Town Wheelhouse. Let's get this show on the road. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are locked on Houston. And Astros, and we are your daily Astros podcast. I'm H Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter at H Town Wheelhouse and on Instagram and at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. I got Rip Griffin with me. Rip, where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rip Griffin3. And I have to say, that's probably the quickest wardrobe change I've ever seen you do. Yeah, thank you, man. You know, I had to do the little quick change thing. I had to get the little, I had to get the spring training vibes on because I can't be in Florida. I would love to be there right now. It has been so exciting, Rip, to see what's going on. Just, I mean, just with them arriving, it's been phenomenal seeing that. And so I just absolutely love it. I absolutely love seeing JV, um, seeing what he has to say. Um, we are super excited. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here this evening. And so we're going to do our best to unpack everything again. So Rip is with me here from the Rip Griffin Show, um, Texas guy. He's got a great podcast. I'll let him share later on in the show where you can find his podcast and what he's going to be up to this year to give him a little plug. Eric is hanging out with family. So I, in his stead, figured I would bring up Rip Griffin. And yes, Mr. Corona, we will mention Mark Berman's tweet that he just tweeted. So if you're listening to us on Monday, the 14th, it might be old news, but it doesn't matter. It's still exciting. So stay tuned and stay locked in to Locked on Astros. Remember to make us your first listen every single day. And we are brought to you by Bet Online. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. It has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So let's get started, Rip. Let's talk about the topic that everybody wants to know about. And how is Justin Verlander doing his first day on the bump? Well, I think he's feeling pretty good, to be honest. I think he's feeling good that he's back in spring training, back around baseball, back around being in the clubhouse. It's something he's been wanting to do since he had his surgery, since Tommy John. You know, We haven't seen him since 2020. And it's good to see him back out there on the mound, throwing throwing bullpen sessions, live BP. There were some videos today with uh, him facing Michael Brantley. So uh, definitely excited to see him back in an Astros uniform. It's going to be exciting for 2022. Yeah, you know, he was hitting 95, 96. And one of the things that I've wondered, okay, so one of the things that I've speculated is because he's 39, because he has so many innings under his belt, and today he's like, you, you know, he's pitched like 3,000 innings. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize right. it was that many. He said basically what he is is he's he is basically a test subject because nobody his age has ever come back from Tommy John surgery to go on and pitch. It's usually younger pitchers. Mm -hmm. And he said, I trust who I am. I know who I am. And I believe that I understand how my body works. I know how to listen to things. And right now I'm feeling really good. Now, I don't want, basically what he was saying was, I don't want to make any predictions or say I'm going to feel this way at this date. But right now I'm feeling great. I mean, 95, 96 on the bump. And he was throwing BP to, I believe there was some footage of him throwing to Brantley where, right. you know, he was missing the zone a little bit, but he, I mean, he he would he was doing his little hop off the mound after he threw. He was doing his regular routine and he just looked really good there 
on the mound. Um, I, I love seeing that. I love hearing him, um, hearing that he really wanted to come back. He said, we loved Houston. We love playing here. And it made sense to come back. And he also said this, Rip. He said he didn't watch any rule. Like, he only watched the playoff games when they were hitting. He said, kind of like when I was pitching, I, I never watched the pitching. I usually just watch the hitting. And he said it was really difficult. I mean, think about that. You, you're in the you're in the bigs for 16 years, and you're basically shelved two seasons in a row. So for him as a competitor, that was probably a tough pill to swallow. Oh, absolutely. And given that he's, you know, chasing that second World Series ring, and you know, he wants to he wants to pitch, he wants to have that longevity into his his early to mid 40s. And not being there, not being around the camaraderie, around the other guys, it's difficult. It, it's and you kind of have to put yourself in that mindset of you know baseball player first, and you're going to do things throughout the season, whether you're on the shelf, whether you're in the dugout, clubhouse, whatever, to kind of get that mindset. And I think that's just what he had missed for so long. So he had to kind of force himself to do it, force himself to get back into that baseball mindset. Yeah. You know, those were the things that that we picked up on today that, uh, you know, uh, he's very appreciative to be back with the Astros, very appreciative to be back in, in Florida. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a long road for him. It's not going to, it's going to be something like he mentioned. It's not, um, you know, he, he is up there in age. So father time will, will eventually catch up, but I mean, but he, he understands that now. And I, think yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think too, one of the things that, that he mentioned, um, you know, today with the, with the press is he said he considered pitching in the world series. I mean, yeah. he, he actually thought about it and he discussed it with his doctors and the doctors told him that it would set him back really, really, really far if, well, he didn't say really, I mean, maybe, maybe I added a few reallys there, but he basically said it would have set him back if he would have done that. So like there, you, do you remember the sentiment, the negative sentiment, like Justin Verlander's not there. The players supposedly don't want him throwing the first pitch. And I don't know if that was actually true. There was all these things going on, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole time, Justin Verlander's contemplating whether or not he's going to pitch for the Astros in the World Series. He hadn't pitched all year. Can you imagine, had he done that, and had the Astros still lost, and had he been set back, we wouldn't have a Justin Verlander ready for opening day. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and that's the that's the competitor in him. I mean, he's that's why he's your, your number one pitcher. That's why he's going to be a first, first ballot Hall of Famer once he retires. Right. And it, it shows. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, um, and, and, and Jay Roberts asked the question, um, which kind of alludes to some of the things I was talking about. Was it ever fully disclosed as to why JV wasn't present around the team during the postseason? I don't know. I think for Justin Verlander, from hearing about the pain it was for him to not be involved in the game and not be able to contribute, that was probably a personal choice because he hated so much. It was his, I mean, think about it. It was his second year pretty much without being able to be on the field and compete, you know, and a, a guy like that, it probably is painstaking to do that. And so, you know what? I give Justin Verlander a pass. It's not like yeah. he was a fifth or sixth year guy and the Astros really did. I mean, his presence wouldn't have made a difference. Um, the Astros did what they did and the Braves did what they did. So I don't think it changes anything. Um, but it is definitely going to be good to have Justin Verlander because we know McCullers is more than likely not going to start opening day. He may not be ready opening day. Now, they haven't said anything definitive, but from what McCullers alluded to, his recovery has taken a little bit longer than anticipated. I would rather Lance McCullers take his time. We've got plenty of arms, and who knows? They may go get one. Who knows? They may they may they may sign Correa. We don't know, but we'll get we'll get to that towards the end of the show. What I do want to mention, Rip, is Bet Online is here for all the people. Why? Because college basketball tournaments are finally upon us. From the latest odds, contests, and player props. 
BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Now, if you have heard um, about prospects, I want you to think about MLB prospects. Go to MLB prospects where Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia and isn't going to go deep into MLB starts for tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Now, Rit. We're going to have a little segment. We're going to try to bring it back. I know Eric's not here, and I hope I do this right, and I hope I do this proud, but we are going to go with our segment that Eric started with Thoughts by Dusty. Thoughts by Dusty. So, Dusty Baker, we're going to get to... His one of his funniest things he said today, but what did what did Dusty say when Chandler Rome asked him who was your first call that you made whenever the lockout ended? What did Dusty say? Well, he really didn't call anybody because if he calls somebody, then that means somebody's going to get mad at him and ask him why they didn't call him. So really, his first call was to nobody. I mean, maybe to his wife or family there in, in where he's at in California, but I don't. I don't blame him. I mean, I would probably get a little jealous if Dusty didn't call me either. So, I mean, Dusty, <laughs> Dusty's a man. Um, but, you know, that's, that makes sense. That's, I mean, that's Dusty being Dusty. And so well, that's him. He is, a, he is a player's coach. And we've had Clay Hensley on several times. We played with him when he was with the Giants or played for him. And he said he's the ultimate player's coach. Another thing Dusty Baker said was he has been impressed with the way the players have come in and the way they've looked. And it has been really impressive to see several of the players come in. Jordan Alvarez, um, you know, you have you have Alex Bregman, you have Michael Brantley. Now I haven't seen Jose Altuve yet, but I'm sure he's there and around. But it was great to hear the the manager who's been around baseball for forty plus years. Right, Th- this guy has been there, done that. I mean, he was on deck when Hank Aaron broke the record. I mean, this guy's been there. He he is baseball history. And he is a, I'm going to say it all season, he's a future Hall of Fame manager. He has got to get a nod to the Hall, whether he wins a World Series title or not. But 2022 may be his year, right? Dusty Baker is one of these guys who he makes a lot of observations. And it meant a lot to him that these guys came in off of the lockout, um, that they came in in shape. So tell me, Rip. What did Dusty Baker do for the first time since November? Tell us. Well, I think it's the first time he's worn pants all year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I mean. Uh, that's what he said. That's what he, I mean, <laughs> the, the first time he's worn pants since the end of the World Series. And, uh, hey, uh, you know, I, I applaud him for, you know, being as chill and as cool, as relaxed as he is. But, uh you know, that's hey, uh that, I know what that, y'all are thinking though. He he's he probably means he was wearing shorts, okay? So don't yes, don't yes. don't get any don't get any thoughts in your head. We're not trying to be bad here, but that was literally what Dusty Baker said. I haven't worn pants since the end of the World Series or since November. And I was like, he said, What? <laughs> and you know, it was it was it was great. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Baseball like like I knew baseball was back, but dude, baseball is back. Like is. we got Dusty Baker giving giving the media like just nuggets like that. I mean, what other manager does that? I mean, he is. If this guy doesn't with the Astros winning the AL AOS and AL, you know the ALCS again, if he doesn't get manager of the year, it's going to be criminal. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know this is uh, this is a a team that is still built for the postseason. It really is, whether it's with Carlos Correa or with not or without Carlos Correa. I mean, this is especially in the AL West. I mean, it's a division that it's it's the Astros to lose, to be honest. But I mean, th- this team wants to get back to the World Series. They want to win another World Series. And that's the mantra. That's going to be everything that they're going to put forth this year. So uh, it's great to have these guys back in, in Florida at West Palm Beach. 
it's going to be great to see them back at Minute Maid Park here at uh, in, in April. So uh, baseball is back. It's exciting. It is. Okay, so so here's the deal. Um, one minute ago, Michael Schwab just tweeted, I'm freaking out. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna jump, we're gonna jump um topics here. Okay. Um Mark Berman, and this is this is 8 45 p.m. on Sunday night when we're recording this, okay? And um Mark Berman earlier tweeted this. Okay, hold on. I've got to find it because I don't want to misquote it. Mark Berman at about eight uh, 26 minutes ago from when we're recording it. Um, Jim Crane said that we would re-engage with free agent Carlos, shortstop Carlos Correa, and the Astros have done just that. Our team has reached out to his agent. We're in discussions. Rip, we may get to break Carlos Correa signing on this episode. Um, I just Michael got Schwab, right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, let me tell you something. Michael Schwab, and he is not, he is not, it, okay. Bob Nightingale, five minutes ago, just tweeted, the Astros certainly not giving up on pursuit of Carlos Correa. So now they're making headlines, okay? Um, so Bob Nightingale's went from tweeting about Tom Brady coming out of retirement, and the <laughs> same day, Carlos Correa and the Astros are talking. This is huge. This is big. And I, I will be the first to eat crow, and I will gladly eat crow because I thought for a fact that Carlos Correa was not going to return. I, I just didn't see a pathway back. And this is what I think is leading to it, Rip. And you can tell me what you think. You can assess my assessment, okay? If the 10-year deal is not out there for Correa, the Astros are willing to go five or six strong years, give him an high AAV, and Scott Boris has already negotiated players with the Astros and contracts that were friendly to the Astros do you think that's what could be happening right now? Absolutely. It, it that's uh, the long term deal. The ten years doesn't fit that what the Astros are trying to do. I believe that if they give him five to the six years, make him the highest paid shortstop in baseball, then he he's set. He, he he's set for the next five to six years. You know, I, I mean. It, I, I want him back. I want him in an Astros uniform. And I think I think now with with the way the the CBA has been restructured and now that there's an extended ceiling with the luxury tax, it gives the Astros a little bit more flexibility to go out and make this move that they need to. I think if they make this move right now, this team is a World Series contender. Well, they already yeah. are a World Series contender. Yeah. But Well, okay, so here's the deal. So we get this jolt of adrenaline and this jolt of excitement. And then Jay Roberts comes in with the logic. Okay, Jay, I've got to bring it down a notch. Jay brings up a good point. And Jay's one of our one of our smarter um, listeners. I think all our listeners are smart, dude. I, I think I think all the people that listen to Locked on Astros are not smart because they listen to us, but because the knowledge they share with us. Okay. They were already smart before they met us. Scott Boris won't let him sign this quickly, just a leveraging move. We've seen it before. That is very true. Yep. That is that is truth to word right there. Again, this is not a definite he's going to sign for real. Like, this is it. Like, But wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if he did it while we were live on this podcast? I would have to totally rename the podcast, right? Right. I would so, have to so so one minute ago, Michael Schwab just, just tweeted, it's all up to Jim. Oh, wow. Wow. So, okay. So dude, let's, <laughs> this is, this, everything's just yeah. changing now. The script yes. has been thrown out. Yes. So, okay. So, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. It's all up to Jim. So this is what's happened. One of two things, and this is just off the cuff. Okay. One of two things has happened. Carlos Correa has said, I'll come here for six years with the player option in the last two years mm -hmm. for this much AAV. Okay. Or they've done some super mega deal where cranes like, we'll give you two years, a third year player option. And we're going to give you like 48. 
like we're gonna we're gonna drop eighty something million on you in those two years. You have a third year option. That way, if you want to leave, skip town. You want to go somewhere when you turn thirty or thirty one, you can still have another chance at a big contract. Okay, right. Um, but because I've been told, I've been told from people that I don't, I don't know if they necessarily talk to Crane, but just they know and understand the ins and the outs of the Astros front office more than I do. They're like Crane has been very die in the wool six years, no more than that. So if this is a possibility that this goes down and this happens, that means that I I don't think it means Crane's gone to 10 years, but I do think that the six-year offer they've made, Carlos Correa is going, is that all you're going to offer me? What about a little more? And then Crane and Click are like, hey, because here's the deal. At the end of the day, (laughs) I just, okay, at the end of the day, what happens to Carlos Correa is going to be a good thing or a bad thing for Jim Crane PR wise. Okay. Absolutely. And Jim Crane has spent money. Jim Crane has put this team in a winning position. He has put people from the minor leagues to the major leagues and been the best owner in Astros history. And if anyone says anything else, then they're delusional or they live on a different planet. You may not like that Jim Crane won't go 10 years for a player, but you show me other than Jeter and a couple of their players where they signed 10 year deals and that brought them titles and that brought them stuff. The Astros strength is in their numbers. Mm -hmm. They have a ton of cap room and I'm going to throw this up there because one of our listeners like broke down a whole bunch of money up here for us Um, because you understand when you're when you're preparing for a show. Um, you have so much you can prepare for and then things come in. So this is on the fly. So Mr. Corona, thank you so much. He said, keep it in mind that Brantley, Presley, Odo, Yuli, Baez, Maldonado, Castro, Diaz, and Montero are set to be a free agent after 2022, which is 64 million will be coming off the payroll. Okay. You know, he says, which of those nine soon to be free agents would you guys make an effort at re-signing and who would you let go? Or would you use that money to bring in nine different free agents? Or with that money out there, does that mean that you're able to tell Carlos, now look, after 2022, we can shoot this price through the roof, right? Like you start the first year a little little slim, it looks, and then you blow the league out of the water. And it comes out to, when you average it, it comes out to getting, um, getting your, getting your, Money's your, worth, yeah. Your, your paycheck, right? Yeah. No, it's. I mean, that would that would make sense. It's who you want to try to keep with uh, those nine soon to be free agents at the end of twenty twenty two. With the addition of, you've got to think about Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez as well, and you know Car- Carlos Correa, hypothetically, if he is uh, able to resign with the Astros. So, um, I mean, but you got to look at, like you mentioned, especially within the minor leagues, there's so much talent that's fixing to come up pitching wise, fielding wise, you know, everything that, that we can continue to build and still be competitive at such a high level that we already are. So I think that no matter what transpires, I mean, the Astros are still going to be set for, for years to come as well. But, um, gosh, man, if something were to break right now, that would be, that would be amazing to find out okay so so here's the deal um the bottom line is this with all this frenzy going on now samuel 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 and i um samuel and the show i i think there's a lot of back and forth samuel says a lot of things he shares a lot of opinions and i would be correct in saying this not a lot of people agree with samuel but samuel is right at times and this is what he mentions and i like to highlight when our when our listeners are right. And I mean, they're really right nine times out of 10. He said the Yankees have, have Volpe and Pereza in the minors. The Yankees don't need a shortstop. He also said the Yankees still need to sign Aaron judge. Hal Steinbrenner isn't George. Who's going to overpay for players all the time. So that's true. Um, And then world traveler comes in and throws drip a bone. It's like Rip said, if you were going to sign Correa, they are immediately world series contenders. I agree with that. But all this talk, Rip, makes me want a built bar. Why? Because built bars are the most are the best pro taste, best 
tasting protein bars in the business. Like I'm so excited right now. I think a built bar would calm me down, but I can't get one because my headphones are connected to my computer. And anyways, it would be a disaster. But they have this rip. They don't just have built bars. They have the first protein infused marshmallow puff. They're fluffy. They're marshmallow. They're amazing. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat. They're covered on 100% chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with incredible flavors. And for us in Texas, they have the cinnamon churro. They have coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. Dude, you got to get these rip. If you haven't had these, it's easy. If you go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, you get 15% off your first box. And if you don't want the built puff, you don't like marshmallows, they got built bars. Again, wrapped in 100% chocolate. They average 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. When you go to their site, they have so many flavors. Sometimes they have sales. Sometimes they have special flavors. They have second runs. I mean, the built kingdom is unbelievable. So go to built.com and use a promo code LOCKED15 and get 50% off your order. Use a promo code LOCKED15 at 50% off at built.com, the best bar in the biz. Okay, man, this, this is, it's like we are at 25 minutes and 40 seconds. And um, we, <laughs> we haven't had anything new other than um, – like someone I keep, goes, someone I, goes, I, someone goes, I'm praying. <laughs> right. Emily, you know, I, Emily, Emily, who follows me, she goes, I'm praying. And so like prayers up, Houston, prayers up, haters down and prayers up. I mean, we, you know, Lord, right now, we just ask you to be in this negotiating room. <laughs> we, we ask that you, you, that you, that you bless the union of the Astros and Carlos Correa that it be that it be one relationship that builds and creates championship upon championship but here's the question here's the question and i addressed goodrum earlier when it comes to if carlos correa signed but i'm going to put a question up here on the board and i want you to try to answer it okay okay here we go here comes the question what happens to Pena? If Carlos Correa is signed, what happens to Jeremy Pena? Because it seems like this kid is on the precipice of beginning a major league career. Do you let him marinate for another season? And does he now become either A, a center fielder, or B, a trade piece? Because if you've got Carlos Correa on a multi-year deal, Jeremy Pena's value and his usefulness changes completely. That's a that's a good question because you know all signs were pointing to Jeremy Pena being the heir apparent to shortstop. It's if Carlos Correa were to leave. Now, depending on really what kind of season he has in 2022. Kind of determines his fate, to be honest. Uh, you know, given that uh, he you know, came in in, in 2018, uh, spent a couple of seasons in the minors in 2019, basically in in low A and high A, and then kind of fast tracked it from the rookie league up to to AAA in in 2020 2021, excuse me. But he's also been injured, and he didn't get a whole lot of games in at uh, especially in AAA. So I, I think what the Astros will probably do is if Correa does sign back, they keep him in AAA, see how he does. And the possibility of him being a trade piece, it, it all depends on how the outfit shades out, I mean, especially with Jake Myers being injured. You know, you still have Chas McCormick and, and Jose Siri as well. I mean, th those two guys are probably going to be your, you know, your starting center fielders. Uh, there'll be more of like a, like a platoon type base, but you know, outfield might get a little crowded now. It wasn't at so much at first, but it kind of just depends. And Carlos Correa is like the centerpiece to everything else, depending exactly. on uh, on what he does, kind of dictates what the Astros will do. And <sighs> someone 
did something about a boaster only tweet, which I just saw that as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, 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 and so, and so here's the deal with that. So rip, I'm going to, I'm going to, that was an excellent answer. Thank you. Because Pena, that is going to become a question. Um, that does this put a chip on his shoulder? Does this rub him the wrong way? What does this do for clubhouse chemistry? If he's there as agents have noted, Given the offers Carlos Correa got before the lockout, his previous agency would be in position to claim a majority of whatever he gets in a multi-year deal. This may be the linchpin right here, folks. This may be the crux of the matter in Carlos staying, even if it's for one more season. If Correa signs for one year now, new agent Scott Boris gets all money of a new deal next winter. They might do, and I don't know if they do this, but this is just me going off because I've never been in the negotiating room. Give him a massive 48 or $50 million deal for one year with the understanding that after this first year, you're going to offer him a seven-year deal where he'll average $48 million or something like that. But again, if you give him six or seven years and you give him a ton, a ton of money, You've got to look at the future. How does that impact Tucker? How does that impact Jordan? How does that impact other players signing down the road? You don't want to cut your nose off to spite your face. But from this Buster only tweet, I would be shocked. I would not be shocked if they signed a one-year deal. That would be a very Boris thing. I didn't yes. realize that. So Boris is going to get screwed if Alex, if, if Alex, if Carlos Correa signs a multi-year deal. I didn't realize that. So that puts the Astros in the in the driver's seat more. Yeah. Because yes, that does. Yeah. The yeah, and I'm tweeting that right now. The Astros are in the driver's seat. So so if that's the case, he signs a one year deal, which I think honestly, with everything that has gone on this offseason, anyways, a one year deal will suit him and the Astros perfectly. And it gives the Astros a chance to kind of reassess everything come next offseason, which is exactly. 2022. And like with uh, whoever I forgot who said who mentioned everything that was coming off the book, sixty four million. That's that was coming a, off the books, Mister Corona. Mister Corona. Corona. Yeah. I I apologize, but uh, I mean that just sets twenty twenty two off season up to be epic. And here we are, March, talking about this already. And <laughs> it, it, but it, it's it's crazy because um, that's that's how like, this. That's where that's where where it's it's setting up now for for November. I mean, this, like, what the hell, dude? Like, I, I didn't, like, I didn't know this was going to happen. Or or, or I, I, I'm just so, I'm so freaking excited. Like, I, I literally, I literally, what I, what I want to do is, is, um, uh, I want to, I, I want to wrap this show up. But if, if we extend this, if we extend this, okay. Um, I will take the audio and I will cut it up into a second part. Um, but I'm I'm gonna have to get a hold of the other uh, players on our station, the Locked On Texans, Locked On Rockets, to see if we can extend this a little bit to see if it's worth waiting an extra ten minutes or so. Um, because I know people are hanging in and hanging on. So, um, Rip, do this for me. Um, of of those that came to camp, okay. Um, with like maybe some of the non-roster invitees. Uh, do you know, let's, let's go to that while I figure some things out here. And um, who do you think will make moves? You know, you got like your Alex McKenna's, you've got your other guys that are in there. Who do you think will be making moves and moving up? Like um, Easterby, um, Joe Record, you know, different guys that are out there. Um, uh, what is the um, uh, Shea, Shea Whitcomb? Um, right. You know, you know, third baseman, uh, Alex Degati, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, John Bermuda. It's just what are some names of some guys that might might be either on the roster or non roster invitees that that might be making moves? Well, I think, first of all, I mean, you, you, you've got to look at, you know, David Hensley and uh, Greg Kissinger, you know, two guys that spent majority of last season down in double A Corpus Christi. Those two guys are probably starting to make some headway here pretty soon, um, you know, especially uh, on the pitching front. I was hoping to see Alex Santos make the uh, get the invite, but he's not on the roster. So uh, he probably maybe next season we'll see him because he's one of those top prospects that's in the Astros farm system right now. That's definitely making some headway. You know, um, I mean, 
you know, Seth Martinez is another guy that uh, we saw in, in, in struggling quite a bit um, that has definitely continued to impress. And as he continues to climb up the ladder, especially uh, through the, the minor leagues system, um, you know, other than that, I mean, other than, than the guys that we know, like Hunter Brown, Sean Dubin, uh, JP France is a guy that I would like to see get a little bit more activity, uh, at least get a better look at. I mean, seeing him a couple of times in, uh, in Sugarland, the, the guy's got good stuff, you know, needs to probably control the walks a little bit, but the strikeout numbers are there. Definitely good velo on the fastball, good mix of, of pitches between off speed, curveball, slider, all that good stuff. So it's definitely one guy that, uh, you know, the Astros are definitely probably keeping an eye on as well. Um, you know, you know, Corey Lee is another guy, but, um, uh, we already know about Corey Lee. He's a, he's, you know, the number one prospect in, in the Astros system. So, um, but those are some guys, maybe Taylor Jones is another one. We saw Taylor Jones quite a bit last season, but, um, but yeah, Joe Perez, you guys talked to Joe Perez not that long ago. No. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think, I think Joe Perez has a lot to prove just because w- with his injury and all, um, I know some of these guys, McKenna and them had, had injuries they dealt with. So, so they have a lot, a lot to prove, but someone who continues to fly under the radar is the man you just mentioned, Taylor Jones. Yes. Taylor Jones has some sneaky stuff. Taylor Jones is very he, – he's he's got speed. He's got length. He's got athleticism. I mean, this guy was a top basketball prospect out of the state of Washington, um, and it was just one of those things where you just wonder um, – like when is this kid going to get his chance? And then he remember he missed that fly ball over by first base, and he caught he caught heck for that. Good lord, people like I know people yeah. people acted like they've always done everything perfect, and they're like, oh, he's terrible. How can you have him out there? Blah 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 blah. Oh, someone said, where's Kent Emanuel? Kent Emanuel signed with the didn't he sign with the Phillies? With the Phillies, he was a rule okay. five. Yeah, Kent. And- yeah, Kent. Yeah, yeah. Kenny Manuel was a Rule Five. The Phillies picked him up, so he is in Philadelphia, continuing his career. They had too many players that were closer to making a major league impact um, than Kenny Emanuel was in the long run, and so I think that's why he that's why he did it. Someone literally just tweeted at me, <laughs> and they said, "How about one year, three hundred million dollars?" <laughs> Oh, I think uh, Tommy Callahan, the third, I think, I mean, you had a great run with Tommy boy. um, But I think that tweet probably goes in the tank with black sheet by Chris Farley. That's, that's, that's a, that's how bad that tweet is. No, he's not going to go one year, 300 million, but that's pretty funny. Um, You know, the bottom line is this rip. We've got so many guys that can make an impact. Don't sleep on Taylor Jones. Someone mentioned earlier, Pena could move to first. I mean, first base is always that kind of an auxiliary position yeah. that most that most people can play. Um, Yuli's going to he's played it already. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And another thing that Eric and I touched on um, throughout the year is that is that the the Astros purposely put their players at different positions so they're more versatile, so they're more valuable because things change. I mean, how many times you hear of a position player becoming a pitcher, kind of like Rick Ankiel, who never really lived up to the billing, but he started. He didn't start out as a pitcher, but when he did well, he did well. Um, and so it's just one of those things where the Astros do their homework. They have Taylor Jones on this roster for a reason. They could have offered him in a trade down the road. I mean, they traded Abraham Toro. And right. as far as it looks, Abraham Toro is probably going to have a pretty decent professional career. That means that they were higher on the guys that they kept and they let Abraham Toro go. So if that tells you about the guys they kept, that means they've got some kind of value. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, everything is ha- that happens is for a reason when it comes to roster moves and, and things at the front office. Now I, I get it. We're all fans of the game, all fans of the, of the Astros and we want them to make the moves. We want them to be spend the money, you know, do what you ever you have to do. But at, at the end of the day, it's, it's still a business and you still have to run it like a business and, you know, find those key pieces that are going to continue to let you be successful. And, you know, Abraham Toro was, was great for the Astros in, in his time. And, we all miss him, but giving him the opportunity to go to Seattle and to do what he did is uh, it's good for him. It's good for his career. That means he continues to, you know, excel at a high level and still gets to, you know, 
play major league baseball, which is what we all wish we can do, but they get to do it for us. So we live vicariously through them. Exactly. Now, you know, here's the thing. And here's something I want to say, because like I said, I, I would gladly eat my crow. Like I, I, I was really because from everything I knew, OK, people that I've talked to, not necessarily I'm not going to say sources. OK, I'm not going to be like the fan with sources, but people that I talk to. OK, people, people that have more knowledge and understanding of baseball negotiations, of the situation with what Crane wants, with what the Astros are looking to pay and all that stuff. All indications up to this point, Carlos Correa was gone. And this is what I think. The lockout may have saved him from going. If there wasn't a lockout, I very much think he would have gotten a 10-year deal from somewhere else. If yeah. he, in fact, is staying. I think the lockout threw a cog in the wheel and the flooded and overcrowded market of shortstops that was out there. Because you can't tell me that Javi Baez is more valuable than Carlos Correa. Okay? Um Carlos Correa is the most valuable free agent right now. Corey Seager got paid. And see, that's what they're looking for. If Boris can get this massive one-year deal, and that's the thing. I, I mean, I mean, honestly, like Rip, I don't want to be a fool and say this is a slam dunk. But this is about as close as a freaking slam dunk that you can get. Absolutely. Like, the only way this doesn't go down on the basket is if Shaq hits the back of the rim and the ball bounces to half court. I mean, right? there is no way that this goes any other way, right? I mean, please tell me that they're not going to rip my heart out and I wake up in the morning and find out Carlos Correa is a freaking angel or the Astros are done talking. You know, like, this has got to be all, all things point to Houston. And when he returns, let's let's just throw positive vibes at it. When he returns... Dude, like this city is going to go nuts. This city, the city is going to have a parade. I mean, they're going to go crazy. Kobo's Q is going to be overflowing with the Apollo guys and everybody else freaking out. I can't imagine what kind of shirt they're going to make for that guy. I mean, for Correa returning. Um, geez, like, dude, you know, and this is just like, let's not take this for granted. We we get to talk about the greatest sport on the planet, about the best team on the planet with one of the best players on the planet staying right here in our town. Absolutely. It, it's great. It, it, all around. I mean, everything that, that he has done, I mean, for, for the, for the team, for the organization, he, the city of Houston has embraced him. It, he's, it's, he, he's a, he's a Houstonian through and through. Um, he loves the city. His, his wife is from Texas. You know, and she, I mean, everything is here. Family is, is here. And that's where I hope that his mindset is at. Because and even in and even the locked on Texans guy just texted me. He's like, he's like, tell them we said stay in Houston, Carlos. So the Texans fans want him. Dash fans want him. Dynamo fans want him. The NHL to Houston guy wants him. I mean, everybody <laughs> wants him here. Everybody. I mean, everybody from every political spectrum wants him. Every kid from every neighborhood. I mean, Carlos Correa jerseys. It's crazy. People freaked out. I can't buy Correa jerseys anymore. Why? Why aren't they selling them? Like, he's a free agent. Oh, I want a Correa jersey. I should have bought. Like I should have bought a Correa jersey. I've never seen this much pandemonium or fandemonium for a player. Mm -hmm. And I just think it would be a PR disaster if they allowed Carlos Correa to walk. And once I read that tweet from Buster Olney, because that is something I didn't know. That yeah, no. those those agreements, like they're like, all right, it's it's kind of like a non-competing clause, right? Like if you go to work for another company, you can't do certain things or you can't say certain you can't do certain things because you, you know, sh you can't you can't share trade secrets or whatever. But we all love Correa. Um, he is see, Correa will get a superstar reaction. This is from Mr. Corona when he returns in his first game back to Minute Maid Park. I'm telling you. I, my wife asked me, my wife asked me, she goes, are you going to opening day this year? I said, yes. And I'm taking the day off. So, um, I won't even play sick. I'll just be like, I'm going to opening day. Right. I don't even care. I will be there. Locked on Astros will be representing the locked on Astros nation. And we hope that we get to do a meetup at fifth inning. Like we're all crying, like Correa tears and like, he's back. He's our baby. I mean, just 
God, dude, I'm so freaking pumped. Why can't they just do this now? Chris? This is <laughs> killing me, dude. I, I, I keep checking social media. I keep checking Twitter to see what is going on, what is happening. It's like radio silence now. And it's, it's getting to, you know, n- nerve wracking. But, uh, you know, hey, Jim Crane used to say, you know what? You come back. I got you a statue being built right in front of home plate. Home plate interest. <laughs> that's where you will be. Because that is your spot. Because that's where you said it is time. That's right. Yeah, like like you could you, you could have him doing this, and you walk, oh, that, under, you walk under his arms, pointing to the watch. Like that would. Oh, Jim Crane. We we are ready to be hired um, as um, statue configurers. I don't know if that's a thing, but we can say it's a thing. We can. Make um, it. So right here, um, Arlie, Arlie. Hey, hey, um, Arlie. Hey, man. You were uh, you were uh, hating on my episode earlier. It's all good though. It's all good. I'm just giving you our time. Um, so we think Crane is talking to. Car- oh, absolutely, right? Crane, Bill Crane is talking absolutely to Carlos. They're talking to their agent now. I don't know how these talks go all the time. I don't know if they talk directly to the player or if they mainly talk to, um, you know the agent themselves exclusively. I guess it depends. I guess it's probably an autonomous thing. Like each player with that agent, they have different stipulations, right? Yeah. Um, if I guess if Boris maybe feels like the player might say too much, you're like, let us talk and then we'll let you come in when the time is right. I'm thinking is how they handle that. So I, I'm, I can't, I'm kind of hoping that it's, you know, uh, back in the day, uh, the Atlanta Braves offered Chipper Jones like 13 million to when he became a free agent and he, he took it he signed it because that was the only place that he wanted to play was in atlanta and i'm hoping that's the same case the same scenario here where carlos Correa says i'll sign it whatever it is because i want to be here this is home and this is the only place i want to play the only place it's the only place golly we're getting we're going into 46 minutes again if you're listening to this you're probably listening to part two <laughs> of the Locked On Astros podcast the night we heard that Carlos Correa and the Astros were in negotiations. And we hope that when you, like before you started listening to this, that you've already heard the news that Carlos Correa has signed with the Astros for, I don't know, $48 million for one year or something. But right now, um, let's just let's just kind of wrap this thing up, okay? Um, Mark Berman does have the city of Houston in the palm of his hand. Mark Berman, I think, is probably a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. from Marvel. I'm pretty sure Mark Berman has a room, a secret room in the Intercontinental Airport where, like, he just pops out of there whenever someone arrives on an airplane. And, yes, he does. He does have the city. Like, he, like this guy is wielding so much power. He could be one of these villains that was just in the Batman movie. Dude, that movie was, was amazing. But this is even more exciting. Um, so, Rip, give us... Give us your prediction. Now, this prediction will live in infamy if you're correct. Let's say, I'm going to give you parameters. The Astros and Carlos agree to a one-year deal with an understanding they'll revisit a long-term deal after this year. How much money does Jim Crane give Carlos that Carlos is willing to accept for one season? Well, given everything that has happened with the Rangers and Corey Seager, where he got 10 years, $325 million, which is, what, 32.5 a year, definitely needs to be more than that. It needs to be more than a Francisco Lindor, who got, what, 34? 34 and a half. So I think if he gets 35, I think, that's, mean- a, I think that's as high as Jim Crane will go. So I'll give you, I'll give you 35 this year. Because, I mean – You've got new things that are, that are with the CBA that's going to be kind of going into effect. So, give you thirty five for for one year, and then we'll we'll revisit, and then I'll give you an extended with player options and and all that good stuff that will put you even higher. So okay, so so question: If so, they right now have thirty eight million with the new um, CBT. Is that correct? Thirty eight million cap space. Because they were still under two hundred million, right? But I, but I think they have thirty eight right now, and I may be wrong. Okay, but if they have thirty eight million, I think they offer up to almost that amount. I think they offer him thirty seven to thirty eight. That does mean though, if you sign anybody else, because the forty man roster is full, if you trade or 
I mean, if you bring someone in that bumps over that, you go into the luxury tax. And maybe Crane goes, if we go into luxury tax, you're going to owe us a little bit. So maybe maybe this third or fourth year, if we sign you again, you can take a little discount hit here or there. But I think I think they offer Carlos, I'm going to say 37. I think they offer him 37 million for one year to call it a deal. And then with the handshake agreement that at the end of the year, and let me tell you, if Carlos Correa signs with the Astros for one season, you're going to see an on-fire team motivated unlike any other. You're going to see guys become superstars that the league doesn't even know exist. And they're going to go back to their sixth ALCS. They're going to go back to their fourth World Series in six years. And I believe they're going to win their second World Series in club history. I'm making a bold Bold prediction right here. If Carlos Correa signs, they're the favorites. They win, win, win. And Mattress Mac is able to make a bet that he makes good on. <laughs> He's he wants to. He wants to make that bet. I, I'm I'm happy for him for what he he does, especially for the city of Houston. But yes, just to echo what you said, if this team is able to pull everything off, write it down, whatever it is. On this day, March 13th, March 14th, if you're listening, you know, on Monday, that this Astros team book it now, World Series 2022. It's going to be a parade in Houston. Book it now. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, thank you, Rip, so much for joining me tonight. Um, I hate that Eric couldn't be here tonight for this week. Why? Because this, these, these are the shows that you kind of long to be a part of. And Mr. Corona and Mr. Roberts both thanked us for a great show tonight and thanked us for extending the time. Again, if you're listening to part two of this of this podcast, we thank you for hanging in for part two and we want you to make Locked on MLB your second listen because you make us your first listen. Um, Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. And just remember that Locked on Astros has you locked in every day. We're soon going to our five-day-a-week schedule. Rip Griffin, tell us. And I'm sorry, we got sidetracked. Tell us before you sign off what you're doing, where your podcast is. Tell us where we can find you all on social media. And everybody hit the like button as you're watching this podcast tonight. So you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Rip Griffin 3. Uh, Starting a new podcast up soon. It's called the Texas Baseball Report. It's co- uh, coincides with my website, the TexasBaseballReport.com, where you find everything baseball related here in the state of Texas. So if this breaks sometime within, you know, tonight, Late tonight, there will be uh, a new article with uh, Carlos Correa as a Houston Astro. So, but you can follow me on on there, TexasBaseballReport.com, uh, Texas Baseball Report on, on Twitter as well. So, uh, check it out. Give me some feedback, and uh, you know, I'm hey, let's talk Texas baseball. I'm all I'm all about this year. Let's go. Exactly. Rip does a great job. Thank you, Rip, for joining me. Thank y'all, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We we have so much fun doing this. This is is what what I what I love it. What I love about this podcast. It's what I love about the Locked On Network. They give us the freedom to bring on great guys like Rip. Um, again, Eric is out. He is he is um he is hanging out with family this week. This is our spring break, and so he's out and about hanging out with with all the peeps and all the family. So um, if you see Eric somewhere in in Texas, tell him we said hi, and he'll be back soon. I've got some really cool guests coming up this week that will be joining me throughout the week. Lindsey Crosby from Locked on MLB Prospects, a couple others, maybe some social media influencers, Um, maybe someone from a famous TV reality show that that is actually filmed right here in League City. We'll see if we can get that lined up. So y'all take it easy. This is what happened. So Cindy, before I sign off, this is what happened. Um, And I'll wrap this up. Carlos Correa is talking with the Astros right now. Boris, Scott Boris, his agent, will not make hardly any of the money if he signs a multi-year deal. The only way Boris gets all the money from Correa is if he signs a one-year deal. The Astros and Correa are talking. So we ask that you pray. We ask that you throw your good thoughts, whatever it is, um, whatever you do, just do it and make sure that you tell someone about Locked on Astros. Remember, we are your team. Every day, I'm H-Town Wheelhouse for myself, Rip Griffin, and in place of Eric the Man Heisman, who will return, this is your Locked on Astros podcast. Go Astros. Hopefully, the next show, we'll be talking about Carlos back in uniform.